All right, welcome to the uh, June 13th, 2023 Ares Cloud Agent Python user group meeting. Um, do a update and update of the uh, BC Gov code with us in DCO is doing, talk about 082 um, and PRs in general. Um, Acropy plugins, we wanna talk about that, update on progress and plans for that. and. Briefly talk about adding a new maintainer. So those are the topics today and anything else people want to add, I'll, I'll leave space for adding other topics in a moment. Um, reminder, it's a Linux Foundation meeting. So the antitrust policy is in effect as is the code of conduct. Um, <clears throat> everyone is welcome, glad to have you here. Um, if anyone wants to introduce themselves, feel free to raise your hand or grab the mic and let us know who you are, what, why you're joining, and um, your interest in Acapi. As well, if anyone is interested in adding a topic to the agenda, let me know, and we can adjust the agenda for now. All right. Let's get started um, and in the announcements area, a reminder of the documentation page that we've got. And this Thursday, I'm doing a presentation at the Identity SIG on ZKP's, the high school math edition. So if you're interested in knowing a fun topic, going to a, see a fun topic on uh, ZKP's, please join. All right, let's get into topics. Um, Daniel, I didn't check in with you, but assume you're ready and able to uh, chat about what you're doing. Yep, um, let's see. So this week, the big news is uh, we've completed our quote unquote MVP revocation. So we've got all the pieces in place finally that we're able to string them together manually uh, and are able to issue credentials, present them, uh, revoke them and present them again with varying, you know, uh, revocation intervals specified and everything's turning out as expected, which was a uh, pretty big um, yeah. uh, number of refactors required along the way there. Um, so that's that's what's been taking a significant portion of our time. Uh, now that we have this MVP status, we're, we're moving on to implementing the automated registry uh, setup process, um, as we've discussed previously. And we've been building to this point, so I anticipate that it won't be too bad to take that next step and and get the automated portion put together. Uh, I do anticipate that there will be some additional refactories and refinements required along the way, uh, but pretty optimistic that we'll be able to get that set up pretty quick. Um, other things um, that we're working on or anticipate over the next little bit, uh, revocation registry recovery is something that we have kind of just ignored for a moment as we worked on other things, which is the process of catching the ledger up with the wallet, if there's ever a time when the wallet is updated with a, a pending revocation, but that somehow failed in the process of getting it to the ledger. Uh, all that code is pretty indie specific still at the moment, so you need to go through and, and genericize it, I suppose, um, and, and get that working with the um, ledger agnostic interface. Um, also looking at what it's going to take to uh, either adapt or retain the original Indian non-creds interfaces, um, trying to figure out where the balance is there still, uh, what needs to be uh, changed altogether to just use the new interface, or what do we want to like actually stay behaving exactly the same way as before. But okay, I say that poorly. The, the ACPI controller interface should remain exactly the same. Um, that's the goal. Uh, but like what under the hood needs to change, I guess, yeah. um, in that process. Okay. Um, things we're considering at the same time um, are, you know, like, uh, do we retain both systems? If we don't retain both systems, what's the upgrade process going to look like to transition the records to look like the generic non-creds objects and stuff? Um, so there's some questions to be answered there. So we'll be digging into that. Okay. Uh, and then aside from that, just general uh, need to update some tests and uh, cleaning things up. So, yeah, 
making good progress. Looking forward to, again, knocking it out and uh, getting this taken care of. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, any questions for Daniel from anyone? Oh, I, I guess I will mention I've linked to that that project update HackMD document. Um, I go into slightly more detail than I did in these bullet points in the agenda okay. if you're interested. That's and all. links to PRs and such. So okay. Sorry, just writing a note here. Okay. Um <clears throat> Finalizing the 082 release contents. Um, let me take a look at where we are. Hopefully the screen's big enough. I'm experimenting with new screens and ways of structuring my workflow. And the screen isn't usually this big, but hopefully that's okay. Um, uh, so 082 was released. Um, containing everything obviously since 081. Uh, so there's a fair amount in there. Um, you know, this is sort of the list of things. I guess I, easier, there's 081 down here. So there's a series of things. Obviously, the change log covers what is in 082. Uh, since then, we've merged two other items um, a fix for thread ID and a um a a basically a filter on unregistered did methods so these two were seen both valuable and and useful um there is an issue with this in aath it appears to be in this change um i my guess is it's probably something with um the test harness itself as opposed to the library but we've got to obviously make sure we understand that um, Jason, I don't know if you've made any progress on that in looking at that issue. Yeah, I was just going to raise my hand. Um, so you were right. It had to do with thread ID. I just have to do some regression tests. So the test that failed, I got to pass, but now I've got to run it back through the other ones to make okay. sure I can screw up those ones. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's on its way anyway. So Okay, so yeah. it is a fix to Occupy? No, to the uh, test harness, to okay. the um, to the, um, the behave the behave tests. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. So this is not affected by it. Okay. So zero eight two RC zero has been out for a while. Um, so the only question is, of the open requests we have, um, which ones of these, if any, we want in zero eight two um obviously and then and then we'll look at which ones are ready to go regardless so the question the first question and again i'm i'm sort of open to this one is are there things that we think are important to go into 082 um of basically of of the last few that were there i don't think there's that many that that we want to rush out basically rush out and get to uh into the 082. Is there anything that people are aware of that they want to see in that release? There's there's a couple items that um Shanjot had open PRs for that are about um not that one. Um what is it? <laughs> This one, yeah, that that if possible, that would be great. Uh, that is a change that allows to change uh, additional runtime settings on a tenant basis rather than inheriting the the main wallet ones. Yeah. So that's that's good for multi tenants um, uh, deployments. And there's the other one that is the one about the logs, which is basically adding the initial. Um, step to adding context to log statements so they can be, be filtered by tenant. Right now, there's no identifiers that would show which tenant that log statement is coming from. Is that included in this one? I don't see a second one from Shanjai on that topic. No, there should be another one, unless it was already merged. Let me check. I'm, maybe it was merged and I didn't notice. 
So maintainers, we would need a review of 2233. Yeah, the log one was merged already, so I think we're good with that. Yeah. Okay. So the, the I guess the one question I have considering what should go into a 082 release is uh, we, we've got some other things that we know are coming soon, like uh, deprecating, or not deprecating, I guess, but dropping support for Python 3.6. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's some other... Uh, changes that are dependent on that. Uh, and there's a couple of other breaking changes. So I, I guess the question I have is, how soon are we going to see the next release if we do a 082 now? Because if it's pretty soon, uh, then I, I'd say we can hold off on some of the breaking changes. Uh, yeah. But if it's going to be a bit, then I, I'd maybe we want to try to get a few more things in. Yeah, my temptation is that we put O. Oh, 082 out and then we almost immediately start working on um 09 so there's this one in here that i think is an important one um that i'd like to get in um this one i'd love to get in as soon as possible but i think that's a 090 um so those would be my push this one um i I think there's not a lot of controversy to it, but but that we've not had a, a review on it. Um, so, you know, we could start to go through these one by one and see whether they're ready to go. Obviously, three six we're stuck on, right? Because um, Wade got so far. Wade, you haven't been able to get past um, where we are. Just haven't had time, right? No, oh, I just I poked at it, and it it just. It gets to a certain part, uh, like it. It starts the. It starts one agent, its mediator starts Bob, and then it tries to start Bob's mediator, and then nothing happens. It just it freezes, and I can't seem to get any logs as to you know from GitHub Actions or Akapai or anything that would indicate what's going on um, with that particular mediator. Um, and I can't reproduce it locally because it works every time. So, hmm. uh, and, and it, it has something, something to do with, uh, the version of Python because it works all the way up until Python, uh, 3.7 in GitHub actions, and then it stops working at 3.8 and then 3.9 doesn't work as well. So I don't, you know, I, I'd, I'd like another set of eyes and a different brain on it to, <laughs> you know, maybe see something that I can't. Okay. I, uh, I, I volunteered myself to take a look at that, but just haven't gotten around to it yeah, just yet. You're, you're very busy. Okay. Okay. So that one's a big one, but again, we would not want to put that in 082. Right. Um, this one looks ready to go, I believe. I think that's the one that had the dependency that had yeah, dropped support for 3.6. Right. I think we could probably, I think there's are, there are ways to address this and get it into a, a Python 3.6 release of Akapai. Um, uh, we've, I, I've worked with the multi-formats library before and it's not like it's doing it's doing, it's useful. It's convenient to have. Um, I think once we do get to a point where we're beyond 3.6, I think it would be helpful to include the multi-formats as a dependency, uh, yeah. but it's also possible to work around that. I think if we, if we wanted to push for that, I guess. So this is just um, NGROC endpoints in the manage process. Um, there was a review left with, with comments, um, and the person hasn't responded. 
I don't think, you know, obviously I don't think this one is a high priority one. Um, this, this is the one that I am worried about. Is, is this ready to go now and should we put it into 082? So I reviewed this one this morning. Yeah. And uh, uh, Sasha got uh, changes in addressing feedback. And I think this is good to go. Okay. And you're good with it in 082? Yes. Okay. So that was my plan for that one as well. Thinking what number are we at? Don't even see it on the screen anywhere. Okay, 2235. So I, assuming the tests pass, um, we'll push that one into 082. 2233, if we can get some reviews on that, um, we'll put it into um, 082, and then likely we'll declare it done at that point. Okay. This one has discussion going on. This one's breaking, so we won't change it. And then these are fairly old that we are okay with looking at them in a bit. This one will go away um, with the work that, uh, with some other work going on by BC Gov and Jason Syro, Syro Tuck. And so um, that's, that's basically the list of all of the things that are going on. So that's the plan. Um, 22, 33, and 35, we'll try to get into 082. And then 22, 47 will be um, definitely a requirement for 09. And, and that will should be the next one, and we want to get that very soon. Sounds good? Any other comments? All right. That took easier and faster than I thought. Um, Akapai plugins, Emiliano, you wanted to jump in and say some things. Do you want the screen or? Uh, no, that's okay. I don't have anything to share. Um, it, it's more of a conversation and kind of like trying to throw out there some of the things we, we're thinking we'd like to do. Um, Ian Costanzo did a while back an analysis about which parts of Akapai that are currently part of Akapai core could be pluginified. And um, there's a hack and D document which I can put in the in the in the wiki yeah. for reference and that outlines some recommendations, best practices. And as part of the the push that we're doing um, to get multi-tenancy working better for us, uh, which means have multi-tenancy working. We, in particular, were using the Traction plugin to manage parts of the multi-tenancy um, provi provisioning and, and management. And on top of that, we're trying to get some uh, progress into the multi-ledger right support for for agents. Um, since the idea of a multi-tenant multi multi instance would be like anybody can decide basically where which ledger to to be rooted on. Mm -hmm. um, what one part of these would be maybe taking a look at plugins and have two two separate but uh, kind of like concurrent conversations. One is like the, the idea we were having in, J in Jason Sherman. I was talking with him yesterday, so he, please chime in if you if you if you want. Was to try and start creating uh, either a context folder in the Akapai repository or maybe even better. Um, a separate repo for official or, um, yeah, I don't know how to name the plugins for Akapai uh, so that we can start moving components out there. Um, the idea would be to have a single entry point for the main plugins that are not like product specific, but they provide extra functionality such as, you know, the, the, the Redis queuing or multi tenancy, which is just like an add on to the mm -hmm. core functionality without being specific to any product. Uh, that would be, in our opinion, a benefit also for consistency in how to develop plugins 
in the future, uh, there was some conversation about people not knowing exactly how to tackle them. There's like a few different uh, flavors of implementations, and we would like to make them a little more uh, standardized if possible. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like the, the idea, and we would like to start pushing in that direction, potentially starting with um, the multi tenancy piece. Okay. I don't know if you want to add anything, Jason. Yeah, I, I think it covered most of it there. It's, I think we've got to kind of push this along. So, yeah, like, uh, Emiliano said Ian did all that work to kind of do some analysis on it, but nothing's really moved forward with that. And I think you have to be kind of uh, proactive. Um, it may be simpler just to have a plugins folder um, at first in um, in the Akapai repo, but it's probably better to be outside of it. Um, yeah, and and the traction team's got three plugins that I can see that aren't traction specific that add functionality. So they've got the, the multi-tenancy stuff with um, allowing multiple tokens to be valid. Um, so you can have multiple clients um, using one wallet. That thing is not traction specific. Um, they've also got basic message storage um, and uh, connection alias updating thing. So really small little enhancements that maybe don't have to go into Akapai proper, but um, could be used by anybody else if they have a similar situation. So I think getting those out there, getting them, like Emiliano said, standardized, this is how you build them, this is how you test them, this is how you would right. bring them to your project um, would be pretty beneficial. I think it gets the ball rolling, maybe more people be interested in creating small little things if they're seeing yeah. gaps in, in Akapai and stuff is they'll have a, a venue to do so. Um, and, you know, I think the Ontario team, they had issues with um, being able to contribute because they don't have access to public repos. So having a, like maybe a, a, a shared Hyperledger Labs repo would help them to be able to um, share um, plugin code that they're creating as well. That was an issue from way back. So, okay, yeah, those are that's my two cents on it. I think yeah, it's time, the time's kind of right to push this forward a little bit more. Um, Daniel and and in DCO folks, you guys have Aries um, toolbox plugins. Are are they specific to toolbox, or do you think they would fit in an Aries Akapai plugins repo? Um, I don't know if we've talked about this or not. I can't remember. I think we have, but we're actually moving in the direction of deprecating, uh, the Aries toolbox plugins. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't think that would be something that we would want in, uh, uh to include there. Um, so ha having, I mean, the answer is probably correct, but for a little more context, the, the plugin themselves added protocols like admin protocols to Akapai that could be called or used by anyone. Right. So um, if the community found those useful, they could maintain without ill effect, even if the toolbox goes away, but probably not calling that it the toolbox plugin yeah. would assist to, to correctly identify what it is. So. Um, we are totally okay if someone wants to, it, it doesn't have to die if someone wants to continue to to have it, but we might consider a, a okay. rename. And your thought on plugins for Akapai in general, is it a useful feature at this point? Any any comments from anyone, Daniel or others? Um, yes, I think this is generally a, a really good idea. I think that'll, that having moving a lot of the functionality of Akapai into plugins allows us to um, have a cleaner separation of concerns between different things. We've got a little bit of bleed just kind of all over the place in, in some of these components. Um, so moving some of that out, uh, then the core Akapai structure, I think, becomes more maintainable. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, if these plugins are not directly accessible, we can, you know, we can say that's that's a plugin feature, that's a core feature, and we have a little bit more uh we can take a firmer stance on what belongs where i guess and yeah, yeah. um yeah I, I think moving to a more of a plugin structure is going to be really important for 
the continued viability of of being able to maintain and update Akapai in a in a quick way, especially with like the size of like each of these components. Like we we don't take away features from Akapai. We just keep on adding new features, yeah, exactly. which is great. Um, but uh, some of these features are are getting so large to the point where we could be, we could really realistically be independently revising them of Akapai and right. not have them tied to the release schedule of Akapai. And I think that would actually be a significant benefit both to Akapai and these features. So yeah. yeah. At the same time, I've also uh, I have been I have like not well articulated concerns about like having a plugins all the way down kind of a thing um because if, if there's there's definitely value in having an agent in a box uh and just having like a core set of things just to be there and available and and have same defaults and stuff um uh, to give a, a slightly more concrete example so we we implemented the universal resolver plugin for Akapai. Um, and that was separate as a plugin. Uh, it was usable, it was good, but I don't think it was picked up by anybody because they nobody was in the habit or or had processes established for pulling in plugins. Yeah. Um, and so until we actually moved it into Akapai, I don't think it was really seeing a lot of use. Um, so having a clean strategy for uh, pulling in plugins and making sure people are aware of these really awesome and important features that are provided by plugins, uh, I think will be important. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a balancing act. You're right, because there's a, there's going to be plugins that can be plugins, but are better off being the core functionality because of the scope that they sit on. Uh, but this idea of having like the you know the repository with the, sort of like a listing of what the official plugins are, what you can find, I think would help in, in that, um, in the effort you were describing of like having people use them instead of just waiting for them to be absorbed. Because we we would have examples on how to add them. I I don't know if it is possible to make, to make like, you know, install installable packages somehow. Maybe it's not possible, maybe it's possible. We can work more cohesively into, getting all of the plugins that get developed in for a specific set to be just used the same exact way. All right. Good discussion. So um, uh, my thought is this would not be a lab, so let's just move it into a repo. Um, I'm happy to create it if we think we're far enough along to do that. And then, and I would say we want to pick several plugins to, to use as to populate it and, and drive off that. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think we can work around that. Maybe what we should do is uh, if we, if we start doing the, the, the Reanalysis slash work of like plucking things around. Uh, maybe Jason can can sync up with you when you know a, a foundation is ready, and then start pushing things over to the other side. Like this is to me is needed right away. Um, if we could bring in the Kafka one from from Sikpus, um work, that would be another good one. Um, and then picking one or two from from traction if they are suitably, you know, uh, suitable for that. And then just say, okay, we've got three or four that we need. Now we'll do the types of things that, that you and Jason were talking about, which is standardizing the structures and the conventions and how to use them, examples of how to bring them into uh, a deployment of Akapai, and then, you know, prevent this thing of them not being used at all, but actually, you know, getting the, the community comfortable with, with both building them and, um, and, and deploying them in a, in a, as easy way as possible. Okay. 
Any other thoughts from anyone on that? Excellent. All right, the last topic is a happy one. Um, we've got a new mediator. So speaking of our pull requests, uh, looks like this has been approved with lots of people approving it. We have the majority of uh, maintainers have um, approved this. Um, I introduced it, so I've already approved it, I guess. Um, so good to go to welcome Jason Sherman as a meet, as a maintainer in in Akapai. Darn it all! I hope to do it today. I forgot this was going to be out of out of out. I hope to do this live in person, but I guess we won't because we've got to run a pile of tests to see if this text change affects the code in any way. Um, anyway, um, Jason, welcome to uh, as a maintainer. Appreciate your efforts and look forward to your contributions going forward. Um, if anyone else um, knows of someone who should be a maintainer, is interested in a maintainer, we did update um, the maintainer documentation as to um, exactly what the rules are for how to propose or self-nominate yourself as a maintainer. And we welcome those. And um, we also in that document um, outline um, sort of the duties uh, of a maintainer and sort of the, the priority order of, of, of what to work on things. Um, this was discussed. Um, so, sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm Gianluca. I'm a mentee of Hyperledger mentorship program. Yeah. And I belong to standard documentation task force. And uh, ask you if you need support for writing documentation and also other kind of contribution because we, we know also the uh, learning program. Okay. If you have, yeah, I, I wrote in, I wrote in, in chat. If you okay. need support for documentation or con other kind of contribution, uh, I don't know if you want to yeah. um, answer later, I will contact you. Yes, and and I think Agnes, you have a similar background. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We, we, all right. So maybe the three of us could get together for a meeting. And are you working with Bobby, both of you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So maybe the the three or four of us could have a meeting on this and and sort of figure out. Um, okay. Uh, there is uh, there is a bunch of resources. There's a bunch of organization help we could definitely use. I think we've made some progress in the last year um, in doing that, um, but we definitely could use additional help. Um, and and so let's talk about your backgrounds and and sort of how figure out how you might be able to fit in. Okay. Glad to have your help. Delighted to hear. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will report. I will report back. Um, and I mean, we we have uh, in in our team uh, we have also um, software developer and uh, also people who have a PhD, for example. Uh, so they can write documentation or also contribute <laughs> to uh, to write code if uh, if needed. Sorry about that. Yeah, excellent. Very much um, delighted to talk to you about that. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, I wanted to highlight, yeah, here's sort of the duties of a maintainer on a, on a Hyperledger project and sort of the, the order of, uh, of activity and, um, you know, contribute to the product by a pull request. Um, this is likely the most common thing, but there's lots of other things that are important to get done perhaps ahead of these things. And that's the idea of, of um, you know, making sure that these, uh, these items are getting done to enable, um, you know, not only your contributions, but others to contribute to it. And that's, and that's a big part of this, that role. So I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to get on that soapbox. 
Um, okay, that's all I have for the meeting right now uh, for the topics. Um, we went through the, the things a little faster than I expected. So I kind of thought this was gonna be a packed meeting. It seems like it's not. Um, are there any other topics people wanna raise um, in the open space we have now? Maybe I was gonna mention mention one thing um, as part of the what I was describing before the effort to using multi tenancy more. Yeah. One side side effect that we're having is we're trying to consolidate also the deployment strategies we have. So we're probably gonna be pushing um, at some point at least an initial version of a of a home chart or try to push an initial version initial version of a home chart. To, to the Akapai repo for Akapai agents. And uh, so maybe keep an eye open for that. And if you have any interest or uh, knowledge in that field, it would be nice to get some extra eyes on it. It's probably gonna be a, a work that's gonna take a while to get it protected because there's a lot of tweak, tweaks and, and settings that need to be added, but we're gonna try to do it as yeah. good as possible in, in the first cut. Yeah, I think that's probably, um, oh, Jason, go ahead. Oh, this is for after this okay. topic, yeah. Um, th yeah, the one thing I wanted to add was, you know, probably the, the biggest um, challenge uh, new folks coming into the community have is that incredibly long list of, um, configuration parameters and, and a, the config file that's possible. And, and that is definitely something that we need to help with the documentation and help with ideas on how we can make that a, a lot easier. So, um, uh, you know, yeah. those are, <laughs> Jen, Luca and, and Agnes, those are big areas where we are desperate for help. So um, part of that is creating code like, like Emiliano is, is proposing by having a helm chart to do that. Um, but others is is just trying to ease people into it and giving them tools they can use to, to make it easier. All right, Jason, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I forgot to file in a bullet point there, just the discussion of adding a dev container um, oh, right. to the Aries Cloud yeah. Agent Python. Yes. Um, as we discussed yesterday, I just didn't want to go whole hog Absolutely. on it. I don't know how the community feels about um, dev containers and VS Code. I know dev containers not VS Code specific, but that's kind of where it leans. And then adding launch stuff. Um, um, I just didn't know how the community felt about adding things like that. So it's underway and it was really useful for me <laughs> to solve some of these problems in the last few weeks. Um, so, I mean, I can always do, do, obviously do a PR and get people to respond on that, but I uh, just thought I'd throw that out there that that was kind of underway to maybe make it easier for new actual developers, not just users of Akapai, but developers of Akapai. Um, we're kind of headed in that direction, so. Okay, so just to summarize um, the plan, Jason is working on adding a, a PR for adding a dev container um, to the Akapai repo so that when you start up in, for example, VS Code, you get a, a, uh, a uh, you, you get an option at least to restart the container in the dev container, uh, restart your editor in the dev container and operate from there. Um, I know, Akif, you've put, a, a, put them in a pile of places and found them really useful. Yeah, especially for JavaScript, but I've been thinking about even the Python one. So this is this would be a great uh, addition, I think, for developer experience. Okay, great. Like, dev containers are pretty new to me. I don't live in that world. So feedback will be very important, I think, for people that are, uh, you know, have created them more frequently or use them more frequently, it'd be great to get some feedback on that. So when that PR is out, that will maybe kind of advertise that that one needs some eyes from other parties. Yeah. yeah. And it's definitely one that can evolve over time. That's for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
again, this that that will help in the getting started. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, any anyone object to having a dev container included in Akapai itself in the repository? Cool. All right. Any so other ho topics? hopefully next week then or the end of this week we'll have a yeah the PR up there if I can get some time to <laughs> document it nicely. Yeah. This Thanks. is in in ramping up. This these are the things that make it go faster, not not slower. You may they may deviate off the path, but the end result is you go faster going down the path. So it's good. Alberto. Yeah. Hello, guys. Um, yeah, I've been asking some questions on the channel, um, and I'm more of a front end person here, and I'm just trying to get my head around um, how my team and I can create um, a high availability mediator. I think I asked that question. Stephen, you answered that question. Yeah. I know you guys from BC Gov have like an open shift thing. And I know and I understand that the mediator, are, all it really does is just like an input output kind of mechanism. If I'm, I'm not sure if I'm correct on that. And I know maybe like a, a simple EC2 instance might suffice, but I kind of wanted to get your thoughts, Stephen, or anyone else on what you recommend. I know the orchestration might be complicated when you have multi instances, but I kind of wanted to see if there's any um, viable options that any other teams have done for handling big amounts of uh, of users. Anyone? All right. Um, at this point, um, the challenge has been, and and we're happy to start and contribute to. Um, uh, start conversations and and go through a design. We went through a fair amount of design work um, last December-ish on this topic. And we got to the point that we decided to hold off on it. Um, and so we haven't made a lot of, of progress other than on the implementation we already have, which as as I mentioned, is not a multi-container. Um, <clears throat> so we are, uh, you know, BC Gov team is willing to contribute to that um, effort and and join in a a collaboration on a design on design work of that. So <clears throat> if um, if that's of interest, um, we yeah. could put out a call and start some meetings on that specific topic. Sure. Yeah, definitely. It is of interest. Uh, and I think the back end team would be the right people for that. But going back to, to whatever, um, uh, I think, can you just explain what the current solution BC Gov has? Um, uh, the basic solution is we're throwing hardware at it. Um, we yeah. have a single instance of, of Akapai running as the mediator. Um, right. We we went down the, we made sure we're running Ascar, we're, we made sure we're running, um, mm -hmm. and just making sure we're, oh, we are adding a cache to it in Redis so that at least if, when the, uh, when the instance moves because of a, a rescheduling on the cluster, we don't lose anything. So that's good, but we aren't able to, um, horizontally scale, we're not able to add more instances of Akapai. And that's because of exactly the problem you mentioned, which is um, each, each instance has to know which instance has the web, um, the web socket connection mm -hmm. to the destination uh, wallet. And, and so we did a pile of work and we think we have some solutions, but, but we kind of deferred it um, to see if others in the community would come up with it. Um, at this point, we're probably ready to say, okay, we better start on it. And so that mm -hmm. is something we'd be willing to start. And, and maybe the next time, the next session, I can, I can do a, a sort of overview of this and maybe that'll be the kickoff to, to more work happening. Right. Hey, Stephen. Yeah. We've got, um, we've. Sorry, uh, Sam, go ahead. Please. Um, we've got a project called Socket Doc, which is 
uh, pretty dumb about what's being passed, but uh, is designed to hold on to WebSockets and then passes the message upstream with enough metadata to know which instance of socket doc in a, in a cluster environment um, contains the, the ability to send outgoing messages. So um, that's a relatively small piece of code. We could also um, show that, I think. That would be awesome. Um, and, and that would be useful. It, it could be used, uh, it's relatively, uh, it just needs an HTTP endpoint on the back end, so it's relatively flexible in how it could be used, but um, that could be useful and we could uh, and we could share that. Okay. Well, why don't we plan on, I mean, this is an Aries wide, um, just to be very clear, we are not tied that this, the, that the mediator has to be Akapai. Um, and, and so, you know, I know um, Animo published something uh, the other day with AFJ and I haven't had a chance to look at it to see whether it, allows for that scalability or not um so but i'm happy to have at the next acapug the you know introducing this topic sam i'll get you to um participate in that discussion and and we can sort of go from the basics of the problem and and then figure figure out what solutions are already available and, and what we can build on does that sound good um that does alberto that works for you yeah, definitely. And just kind of like a, a question um, on the single instance that you guys have. Do you guys have any um, feedback on how that performs with Locust and how many users? Um, so, uh, <laughs> so far we have, we, we keep, we've, every time we've tried, we've crashed Locust before we crash. Oh, I see. So, the, okay. Yeah. The mediator has not been a problem since we put that in there. So we're fairly confident we can go with our use cases. What we don't know is how far it can go. It can go. Okay, it makes sense. So, um, um, uh, Stefan, um, I work with Alberto at Instant, uh, manage the overall engineering. So yeah. we can we we are interested because we have a use case uh, right now um, to actually test that overall. And Alberto actually coordinating with our testing team as well as backend team. Uh, to see what we can do. Um, just for clarification, we are still learning this environment, uh, kind of associated, as you understand, um, for a year. Uh, and I'm trying to see if we can allocate someone with the backend knowledge to help this uh, onto this. But if we can actually uh, give an overview, as you suggested, in the next meeting or a special meeting, that would help uh, jumpstart this process. Okay. Okay, um, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to wait two weeks, but I'll figure out what what we can do ahead of that. Um, Sam, maybe we could have the Aries working group meeting not tomorrow, but the next week. Focus on this. Uh, I yep, the venue I think is is unimportant, but yep. I mean, I don't mean to say that. I think either one would work fine. I is what I meant to say. Are you? But are you okay with? turning the the agenda over to that i am so ready to get back to actual business instead of talking about the open wallet foundation and and i want to have some rfc's process but but we can worry about that okay so yeah, how about yes, this that we plan a week from tomorrow we get together and and we have all things mediator we'll get timo and the animo team involved and and we'll try to build up from there does that sound good Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Technical session, I, I would suspect, and we'll get try to dive into the weeds of what's there, what's there now, what, what the core issue is, what's there now, and what can be done. Excellent. Great question, Alberto. Thanks. Thank you for doing that. Okay, any other topics? Just so everyone knows, um, this is the worst day ever because I have to fast until 2.30 this afternoon before I get some blood taken and, and I could have a coffee until 6.30 and all I had was old milk and so I didn't even have a coffee. I'm just struggling. That's my challenge today. That's why you always schedule blood work, fasting blood work for first thing in the morning. Yeah.
I realize that now. First, you can't eat, and then they make you bleed. And they say that the practicing medicine isn't torture, right? <laughs> so, do you want some pictures of food from here, Stephen? Oh, don't. <laughs> oh, ouch. <laughs> no one should send me pictures from around the world of food. No one. <laughs> All right, folks, thank you very much. I think we'll call it a wrap at that point, moment. Have a good one. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, right. everyone. Thank you, guys.